19,646. That is how many photos and videos I have currently on my iPhone. Everyone's different. To you, that may seem like a lot. To others, it's not so much. Whether you're a filmmaker or just the average person who has a phone, odds are you have countless memories on that device. And I personally think it's a lot of fun scrolling back and looking how many accidental screenshots or ugly pictures of non-flattering angles of your face you took. But you'll also find those memories that you probably have forgotten about. The ones that really make you pause and stop scrolling. You see, on this channel, I talk a lot about technology and the latest camera nerdy stuff. And I know my family who watches this tells me all the time they don't understand 95% of what I talk about. You see, my goal of this channel is to really educate as many people as possible and show those people that you don't need to be a professional cinematographer or have tens of thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment in order to take really compelling images. Indeed, we have done videos on the iPhone 12 Pro Max already on this channel, and I've talked about how to push it to the next level, but the accessories at the time weren't optimized for this device. And so while we got close, I never got the exact results I wanted to. But today is that day. All right, so if you've been around this channel for a little bit, then you've seen me show off this device right here. Well. Technically this device, they look pretty similar. But if you're new here, let me explain really quickly what the heck these things are. So this is called a DOF adapter, depth of field, which is basically where you have a nice sharp subject and then the background is nice and blurred out. Phones have started using software and algorithms to basically create the blurred background, especially for photos. It still looks kind of digital, it's not perfect. And it's definitely at least a couple of years away from really being on par with true depth of field. And so while this video isn't the first time we're featuring it, this is kind of a product update video because this is the one I've been using the past couple of months. And we got some okay shots, but a lot of them were out of focus, kind of blurry, kind of looking kind of funky. And that's because the optics in here and the optics on uh, the Beast uh, Grip Pro here were not optimized for the iPhone 12. And so for the past couple of months, They've been working on updating these two devices here and they came out with the kind of updated version. It's still the DOF Mark II and DOF Mark II. I will say the only identifiable difference uh, between the two is this bottom section here. There's kind of a textured ring and on the new one, it's a lot thicker than this one. If you go to buy this and you don't already have it, you're going to get the newest version. Same thing with the B-Script Pro with this new adapter. If you have the old one and you buy the upgrade kit. Now I know what you may be thinking, is it really worth putting my phone in a cage and attaching a depth of field adapter and putting a lens on this and you know, kind of going overboard all for taking images on your phone? I think there's no better way to answer that than to let some sample footage speak for itself. I actually got a extra accessory sent to me that seemed interesting. This is from Moondog Labs. This is a phone sun hood and it comes in different sizes. This is the XL, which uh, is meant to fit on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I'm not sure exactly what other phones fit the various sizes. So check out their website for that. And then it comes with the largest microfiber cloth. Get ready for this. Oh, like a t-shirt. I kind of feel like it's, ooh, this is my new product reveal thing. Be like, ooh, brand new product. Boom, there we go. Use case, found. Now I actually am kind of a fan of this because it's minimal, it's easy to set up. There's basically on the inside, you can see these little edge panels and they kind of rest um, on top of your screen. So I literally just have my phone set down there. 
And then we just have this little strap that you pull right there. They do have a cutout, so your uh, lightning port is still free. So here's a little bit of feedback on the product. If you're using this with any sort of clamp or just in your hand, it's great. Everything is very out of the way. Now on their website, they have a picture of this in the B-Scrib Pro cage. And it does absolutely fit in there nicely. And it looks like a pretty cool setup. The only issue that I have, you can't get access to the main camera sensor. So again, I'm using the iPhone 12 Pro Max, so this may vary depending on what phone and size of lens hood you have. This part of the lens hood is pretty much right up against this handle. Now I can push the phone this way, which would create more space, so I'm pushing it that way. So I can use the ultra wide angle lens and I believe I can shift it down and, and get the telephoto lens, but most of the time I shoot on the main sensor since that's the best one. And unfortunately, if I push it all the way to the edge, it won't go anymore. Turn on the camera. You can see that it's black. Let's see if I can, you know, problem solve here. All right, that's something. Uh, basically, I just put the phone on first and then I stretched the sun hood over top of the left handle there. So you can see it's on the outside now. Kind of a funky fit, but I guess you can kind of get it to work. If you are using the iPhone 12 Pro Max on the main sensor, and you're using something like Filmic Pro or Beastcam app, whatever, you definitely want to turn the stabilization off. Now you can see here in this clip that you will see these side black bars. Depending on what sort of focal length and lens you have on here, you may see the edges of the depth of field adapter kind of creating a little bit of a vignette kind of mat, essentially. Now, normally in the footage, I just have to like crop in like, I don't know, around 3% or something. But if you keep stabilization on, on the main sensor, which has sensor shift technology, which is where the actual sensor is moving, you'll actually see the sensor shift as you start to move around whatever you're doing. Anytime I do one of these videos and I show this phone rig that just looks kind of ridiculous, I get the questions and comments all the time about, you know, why would anyone do this? Why would someone buy this? Just spend the money and buy a point and shoot or a small mirrorless camera. For some people, there's a huge advantage in speed of your workflow from taking the image to posting it and getting it out there. Maybe for news outlets, for content creators, for vloggers who are constantly posting new stuff where you want something that looks really good. But let's say you're out in the middle of the woods, you're hiking or wherever, and you take a bunch of pictures on a normal camera, well now you have to wait till you get home or even if you have your laptop there and that you can import. Posting them to social media can be more of a hassle because the lack of connection to the internet. Say hello to your phone. If you use a rig like this, you're taking images on the device that can then immediately edit in one of your fancy favorite apps and then immediately post to social media. I'm just saying, it's a very valid use case. So with having to turn off stabilization in order to get the best results, uh, all the sample footage you saw pretty much was handheld, shot at 24 FPS. And so it takes a steady hand. You can apply a little bit of stabilizer in post if you want. But if you do need some actual stabilization, definitely remember that just like any other camera, you can attach this setup to a gimbal. Just remember that when you attach your lens, the whole rig is probably gonna be top heavy, especially my lens here. Uh, the Irix 45 is like two and a half pounds or something crazy. And so I actually had to rig it backwards on my Crane 3S. I didn't have a ton of tilt movement and it was kind of janky, which is why I didn't really shoot any sample footage with it. And I definitely could have added counterweights. So when it comes down to it, the depth of field adapter definitely adds a really cool aspect uh, to the footage, I think. It definitely brings it one step closer to a more legit camera with a bigger sensor and bigger optics. So again, huge thanks to Bscript for you know being a supporter of the channel, sending this stuff out. Uh, hopefully for those of you who are looking and asking questions about the updated products, hopefully I was able to answer those. But if you still have questions, of course, leave them down in the comments below and I'll happily answer anything I can. Oh, and there probably will be one more Bscript video at the end of the month. 
um, cause they are releasing another product and it's right here in my hand, but I don't think I can show it just yet. So we'll be patient. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.